Oga, yeah. uh, can we know you? Anyway, my name is uh, Augustine Chiweta Lobo. Um, I am from Agolozibu in an outer local government area of Anambra State, so Nigeria. Okay. Uh, Chiweta Lobo, uh, what are you doing? This thing you're seeing here. Yes. Okay. I'm uh, I'm carrying out a research on uh, on our folk musical instrument we call Gederebu or Bobantum as the name them sounds or what we inherited because uh, we inherited it from people that were senior to us. Normally played by the children for fun, for a kind of sending signal. Like then, this family will have my cousin here will have my cousin here will have their own. Other families will have the instruments. Once I start hearing some tune somewhere, I know that my friend is available. I can now visit him for us to interact then and play. So it was a kind of communication instrument. Then it was for fun just to for for intimacy friendship intimacy so but all of a sudden it went into extinction to the extent that now you can't see it in any family any longer so having studied music at the university of nigeria so i decided to invest in the research to see if we can revive it not only to revive it modernize it that it can fit into play in any western country can be fit, it can play in any Western musical ensemble. I can use it to play choir, I can use it to play in any orchestra, anywhere at all, for entertainment, for fun, for academic purpose, for anything at all. So that's what you see we are doing. I think this is the third stage for this set now I'm trying to produce. The first stage is to move into the bush and get the wood. We have a specific wood for it, which we call Okwe, popularly known as Okwe. Is rampant in this area, this part of uh, part of the country. It's rampant. You can't. You don't, you don't even need to stress yourself in looking for it. You get it anywhere. Just move into the bush. So then, after getting it, you now uh, kind of uh, you process it first. You start with cutting. Once you cut, you put it into slabs. Then after cutting it into slab you do the conversion conversion is the process whereby you will reduce the size you reduce the size of the wood in a smaller shapes as you can see it now so after the conversion you now scrape the back which is it after scraping the back you allow it to take some days of seasoning Seasoning process is where you allow the wood to stay under the sun uh, from the beginning of the seasoning. Then at maybe two, three, four, five days, you remove it from direct sunshine. Put it somewhere it has indirect contact with the sun. Because heavy sun can affect the wood and it may start giving you wrong uh, sound and yes. So, after which you now come to this third stage where I am, you scrape again keep on reducing it to get the size you want i will still reduce some if i discover that they are not at the same at the measurement of what i'm looking for i'll still work on them but for now they will be on this stage and still be under indirect contact with the sun for more dry up because the reason is this if you did not dry it very well it will give you wrong production you tune probably you may tune this one now to F4. If you tune it to F4 without allowing it to dry well, 
we play it on F4 today. Tomorrow it will be on either F sharp or or G4. It will change pitch. Uh, so that's the reason why you should allow it to dry. Not only to dry, it is mechanical dry. You don't expose it to ash sun any longer. Otherwise, it will just damage. The water. So. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, Mr. Tibetaro, uh, le let me ask you, how do you learn it? Actually, I studied music at the University of Nigeria and Soka. I graduated in 2016. So, it was part of the courses I took. Uh, uh, musical instrument technology. We is one of the third year class final year course so along the line i uh, was opportune to engage the lecturer that was taking the course he engaged us on a field trip in en to a particular town in enugu state so where i saw the instrument again and uh, having seen it, it was a replica of what we were doing when i was a child just took some notice of Hey, stop. Uh, so now, came back from school, graduated, and decided to improve on it because I still discovered that after like 30 years of first encounter with instrument, I noticed it was still the same structure, the same unproper arranged pattern of tuning and the playing as well. So many things. So I decided to just uh, explore what I have, mm -hmm. what I studied. Okay, thank you. So then tell us the philosophy behind the research. The philosophy is uh, one is to improve on this instrument and make it global instrument. Whereby you can travel to Hong Kong and see it. You can move to today in Nigeria you see violin, you see piano. Those are not our inventions. They were not our musical instruments. They, 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 they were given to us by the whites. They came with white men. Uh, so, but you can see them in Nigeria, you can see them in Ghana, you can see them in Sierra Leone, you can see them in Uganda, you can see so many countries. Violin, every trumpet, piano, saxophone, you see them all over the world. But when it comes to African musical history, it seems like you, you only see them in the museum. Just when you want to take musical instrument based on the classification, you go to a specific museum to just find them. They are not much in use outside their geographical invention area. Like this Gedelugu now, you may not see it even in Ghana here. You cannot even see it in Benin Republic. You cannot even see it in Niger. It is only in Nigeria. No, it's only even throughout Nigeria in the southeastern part. Uh -huh. So the philosophy now is to bring it out, modernize it, that the whole world will accept the standard and then move it into the market. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. So, how do we intend to sustain the research? We, we look forward to making it a, a, a task we will invest in, no matter what it will cost us. I wouldn't want it to hang along the way. No, we are facing so many challenges now. It is financial tasking. It is quite fin financial tasking because it requires some specific wood for construction. Like the ones I've done before, there, I bought some woods that can stay for over 500 years without being bad. Uh, so, those are the challenges. Then, now we are looking at how we can sustain it. We intend to have so many people training it, give them professional attention, teach them the necessary things they need to know about music before we can now move into the sustainability because if I didn't do it probably if I am no more if I die the whole thing will hang unless maybe after later in the year somebody may come up and then decide to see what I'm doing so we are planning to keep it flowing by investing little by little on it by getting it letting people know what we are doing that somebody in Enugu Ezike can probably get the video or get uh, the research paper I write on it, follow it, and then construct it exactly over there. Uh, so. uh, thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. So, what are you advising the young youth? Well, I personally, I think uh, creativity is what we sh we should embark on now. The, the the country, Nigeria, Africa at large, I don't think is uh, is moving fine. And uh, one of the reasons probably is because we didn't invest much in invention. We didn't invest much then. The youth should really con kind of construct their time well, not sleeping on the social media if you log out from Facebook you move to Twitter, if you log out from Twitter you move to WhatsApp from WhatsApp you move to Instagram, those, those things though is part of living, but now I think we need to create more time for research we need to create more time so many things to work on so many things to work on modify them, bring them to standard that white people can see it and have the interest to get them from doing that, then we keep ourselves busy, we improve our economy, we, we develop our talents, we help others develop theirs, then we, we probably in, in, in return get one or two things to look after ourselves. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chiweta. What's the name of this one? Uh, we we'll call it the Chaka now. Oh, Rato. Oh. A Chaka. An Igbo language. So, it's, a, it's one of the instruments we have here. I decided to work on it though. With just little reason or target. Ideally, when I was a child, I noticed that uh, our forefathers then they used a specific material as the resonator for this instrument, which makes it to sound so mute. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
in the modern time nowadays you see people using a plate cover a specific co cover of plate to form the re uh, resonator which makes the instrument to start sounding so awful and disgusting i decided to work on it so i reduced the size of the resonator in order to get a sound that is more muted than what we have in the market and the aim is because this instrument doesn't have the, uh, such a heavy sound their tones are mild probably every other thing that will play with it should have mild tone in order to allow the sound to come out uh, if you do the recording or if you perform anybody anyway will be hearing all of the instruments playing not only this one overshadowing whichever so that's the concept of the modifying this because of the tone uh -huh. so it gives the specific rhythm why this one do more of a improvisation it's not instrument meant for lazy players it wants to show your your rascality it wants to prove that you are good to go you are equal to the task uh -huh. It's much energetic playing instrument, or not uh, something you got. We're just trying to test, run the tone so that you have a feel of it. If I have my colleagues, I play it with now and around. I believe we must before five minutes we must see all of them sweating. That's it. That's it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's hear it. I consulted this first because of uh, inability to get the authentic raw material. So before I was able to come across it, I came across it at the Pulovia and I got it. So it, it looks like modification of this one uh, instantly. Uh -huh. So that's it. But the same similar tone. Inside the, what makes this sound? is a one seed, a seed of one spe a specific peer we call Luboboko. I don't know if it has any English name or what. Those one, that one should be for those that study the agri. Uh -huh. So, I, if you get the seed that people normally throw away, because once they lick the, the part that's meant for eating, then the other one is the west. So I'll just gather those west and uh, Add little bits to it in order to make the sound sharp and clear. So, can you tell us how long does it take to make one? It takes you like a day. A to whole day. A whole day. Because it's a... It's not something you do in a head. I am yet to conclude this. So I'm done with the making. It's just to arrange for the handle. Mm -hmm. So probably if you sit without going, being distracted, within five, six hours, seven hours, you may be able, able to complete one. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Chiwetan. Is there any other... Uh, I have I have flutes. You know, I my target is to see how much I will modify on our local musical instruments. Much sound is dry and coupled with the hamatan. You know, it's not favorable to woodwind instruments. So that's what is. I can see this one. I have finished the opening. Yeah, but uh, still having some challenges because the philosophy is to have this now yeah. produce it again to give me the same tonal structure. If this is F here, and it will be F here. It will be F anywhere else. Uh -huh. So that's the challenge now. But uh, we are gradually coming up with a solution.
see. He's just working. It's gradual or something. You can see that the tone is alike. This four. So, but still with slight difference. So, those are the. We have this. We have this. We have this. This one now. We have uh, three. If you look at this one now. You can see that it has different structural arrangement. Uh -huh. This one is tuned chromatically. So which means it, it plays chromatic notes more than this one. These two. Then if you look at the structure, this one and this one has the same structure. Five tones, five tones, then eight tones, eight tones. Then when I was trying to, my intention is just to see how far we can achieve. I came about doing, making these rings with babu wood. So, because uh, I got I got a babu wood to see if I can get generate any reasonable sound with the material. So along the line, I have I got some pieces. Of the, I started to just fine tune them and arrange them for a ring, with the ring. So it's still very fancy for and <laughs> you know, everything is not about uh, West or white man must produce it in order to look good or make sense. Uh, this was just gotten from ordinary wood. Let me get this. I have. Look at it. Now, I was just trying to see what I can achieve here, and uh, coincidentally, I found myself with this. So, this one. Just got these ones from this wood now. 